Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining How to Market Your Sublimation Products and Make More Money. My name is Matthew Maurer, and I am a marketing coordinator at Coastal Business Supplies. I am joined today by the one, the only, Jimmy Lamb of Sawgrass Technologies. Jimmy is an award-winning author and international speaker with over 25 years of experience in the apparel decoration industry. He is, without a doubt, the go-to guy for information and education on everything sublimation, and we're very fortunate to have him talk to us today. Now, if this is your first time joining us, we'd like to let you know that we will be co-hosting future webinars with Jimmy every month for the rest of 2018. After we are done today, you will receive a follow-up email with all the details on our upcoming webinars. We would love for you to come join us to all of our future ones. With that, I'd like to pass things off to Jimmy Lamb. Jimmy. Well, well, thank you, Matthew. What an introduction. You know, there's a lot of people glad that I'm the one and only, okay? I'm just going to say that. Um, <laughs> it might not be, be good to have any more like me, but um, anyway, <laughs> thanks for that uh, opening there. So, as Matthew said, we're going to be talking about how to market your sublimation products and make money and more money and hopefully even more money. Uh, so, with that said, let's go ahead and get started with today's presentation. Well, sublimation is everywhere. It, it really is. And it was interesting when I first started getting into sublimation, I'm trying to explain it to my mother and, and she doesn't understand it at all, right? And, and, and I just started noticing things. Hey, look, mom, this is sublimated. This is sublimated. And it's kind of like you never realize it until you went looking for it. But, but the reality is there's a lot of products out there that can be sublimated. There's a lot of sublimation being done. And there's a lot of make, people making money with sublimation. So when you do start looking around in your environment or you know, out in public and restaurants and everywhere else, uh, as you become more knowledgeable about sublimation, you start to see just how much is being used. Now, a big part of all that is always trying to figure out how it's not being used because that will be an opportunity for you to find a way to put it out there. So always keep your mind open with that. I mean, a lot of times we see, you know, the same things over and over again with sublimation. And, you know, these are big selling items like coffee mugs. You know, coffee mugs are they're a big selling item, right? But there's a whole lot more to the world than coffee mugs. So what I'm saying is keep your eyes open, keep your mind open, always be thinking about new and creative things that we can do with sublimation. Now, sublimation for sure expands your reach. If you're Getting into sublimation for the first time, and maybe you were doing screen printing or embroidery or vinyl, uh, you're going to find right off the bat when you bring in the sublimation, you're able to reach further out with any given customer, number one, and then into new customer areas that maybe you couldn't touch before with the processes that you had. Now, if you're just doing sublimation purely all alone, standalone business, you'll be fine too. But, you know, if you look at an example like you have here, where everything is targeted to a school, you look at the number of products right there, okay? That, that's a lot of different products, and they're all done with the same sublimation system. The only difference being a round heat press being used uh, for the water bottle, meaning a mug press. But everything else was done with a flat press, and everything was done with the same printer. So that's a wide variety of things. I mean, we got photographs. We got full-color graphics. We got unique substrates. A lot of things going on, and that's important to remember because anytime you're talking to a client, you want to make them aware of all the cool things you can do, not just one or two things. You know, if this particular school called you up, for example, and said, hey, listen, um, we want to talk to you about doing, um, you know, some photo awards. Well, make sure when you show up, you have all these other guy ideas here, too, you know, because they're very complimentary, and by the way that you see it, and it will probably open up some doors for you. So always be thinking about that, you know. The customer wants one item, but what are other related items that we can show them as well because they may just not be aware of it. I call that creating a need. Okay, the need existed. They just didn't know it until you showed it to them. All right, so what are you selling? Big question. When it comes to sales and marketing, really and truly understand what you're selling because if you say that you're just selling sublimation, which you are selling sublimation, but, but you really got it wrong, okay? Because when people come to you, they're looking to fulfill some kind of a need, okay? So you're selling solutions, if you start thinking about that. You're selling solutions that fulfill needs. Now, the more you know about a client, the more you can actually predict what their needs are so that when you go to sell solutions, you're able to sell multiple solutions to help fulfill that need. 
And that's a very important part of sales. Uh, people don't tend to buy, well, some people do, but most people don't tend to buy things they don't work, uh, that they don't need. Um, they, they buy what they do need, okay? So helping them with their needs is a good way to make sales. Another part of it is raising the perceived value because people ask me all the time, hey, what do you charge for that? Well, there is no magic answer to that. There is no answer that says use the formula of figuring out your cost and doubling it, okay? That, that's not how it works. It's only worth what someone will pay for it. So everything you do has to be about raising the perceived value of the product. If someone believes it's worth $100 and they have a need for it, they're going to pay $100. If they don't have a need for it or they don't think it's worth $100, they're not going to pay $100. I mean, it's not going to happen. So everything you do has to be about presenting your products in such a way as to raise the perceived value because that's going to get you the better margins. It's also going to get you the sales. So you really need to know what you're selling. So what do I mean by that, though? What am I selling, All right? Let's do a couple of test questions. Uh, if you take that very first image in the middle and I say, what is this? You would say, hey, that's mouse pads, and you could even say it's sublimated mouse pads, which it is, okay? But technically what that is is advertising. The client that buys that is probably buying it for an advertising purpose. Therefore, you need to understand that when you're selling somebody something with their logo, whether it be a business, a nonprofit, maybe a special event, whatever it is, if they're putting their logo on it, then they're actually branding themselves and they're doing advertising. So very important things that, that businesses especially need to do, branding and advertising. So if you go in and say, hey, I can sell you sublimated mouse pads with your logo, that's just not very exciting. But if you're able to go in and start talking about you know, products that make a difference in catching the attention of the customer so that the, you are able to get your brand transferred to them and in front of them, you know, it's sort of a different approach, okay? And that's what you need to talk about. What it is in this case is you're using sublimated products to achieve the goal. So the goal is advertising. Okay, advertising. We can do a lot of different things with advertising. Always remember, too, that we can put images as in pictures on things which actually tell a nice story. And people do like to, you know, see images rather than read text. All right, so let's go a little deeper with this advertising concept. Well, let's look at this company here. Everybody's heard of Hard Rock. Interesting because they don't do any advertising, or at least not via TV, radio, newspaper, magazine, ads, etc. Okay, Their form of advertising is just what you see. It's the products that they sell. They put their name on products and then they sell them at their restaurants. Now, I love this concept because as I really started thinking about it, going in with the right type of client, um, I can kind of do the same thing because I have clients that can sell their brand, they can sell their logos, they can combine it with graphics and make a really nice product. And in fact, in situations like that where I walk in, my concept of my opening line goes something like this. How would you like it if I could show you a way to have your customer pay you to advertise for you? Well, that's what they're doing with Hard Rock. Hard Rock doesn't give away those shirts. They're not cheap either. People go in and buy the shirt, and they wear it, and Hard Rock gets advertising, okay? Harley Davidson is another great example. You know, look at Harley Davidson. They got, they got stores without motorcycles because they've branded themselves so well. But how are they carrying a lot of their brand today? It's just through apparel. They don't give it away. They sell it. People buy it, wear it, and do advertising for them. Keep that concept in mind. That's just one of several different angles to go out into the advertising marketplace. But, but you see, you present it in a totally different way than, oh, I can put your logo on a T-shirt, okay? By the way, stay away from the word T-shirt. Um, people um, have different connotations of what different words mean. And for a lot of people, T-shirt is a low-end product. So if you're talking about sublimation products, talk about performance apparel. Okay, performance apparel, moisture wicking, all that fun stuff, because that's what we're selling with our uh, poly performance um, apparel products, okay, which are a little higher end. All right, what is this? We started with a t-shirt. We got other things coming into focus. You could say it's advertising, and to some degree it, it is. It's advertising locations, but this is what we call souvenir. Now, this is important because how you do an approach for souvenirs is different than your approach 
for advertising, all right? Because what you're doing with souvenirs is typically you're selling something to someone who's going to resell it to the end user. So you're not selling to the direct end user, you're selling to a middle person, which is also going to affect your margins because they have to be able to mark it up as well. So you got to think that through, but the reality here is thinking and understanding the end user. What is it they're looking for? And if you can really come up with some good products and good images, you can work well in this marketplace. This is one of my key marketplaces. I know it very, very well. Okay. Um, and I like it because we sell only our images, no one else's. So we don't have to worry about nitpicking color. <laughs> it's, it's my image, okay? Uh, but if you look at these items, every one of them works as a souvenir except the one in the bottom right-hand corner because it doesn't tell you where that lighthouse is. Now, I happen to know I live in North Carolina. That's Cape Hatteras Lighthouse on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. But nowhere does it say Cape Hatteras, Outer Banks, North Carolina doesn't say that. Uh, if someone's on vacation and they found that hanging there in a gift shop, they would probably really like it. But they might, if they're from somewhere like Ohio, then they might actually step back and say, "Well, wow, you know, this is supposed to be sort of souvenir of where I was, but it doesn't say where I was." So that's one of the things I learned a long time ago. We got to put the name drops in there because more times than not, people buy the product first because it has what we call the name drop, the location. Then it has a great image. Okay then it has a great image. So those things are very important to understand. Um, and other things to use, and, and this is one of my approaches, I'll just tell you that little learning curve with souvenirs. Uh, we were shifting into being able to do our own products and having trouble getting our foot in the door, okay? Uh, we weren't understanding the market properly, therefore, we didn't approach it properly. And one of my first customers in this marketplace was very nice to sit down and kind of explain how they ran their business. So. I live in North Carolina, tourism along the beach in North Carolina is summer oriented, okay? So keep all that in mind. I don't know where you're at, but I'm talking about summer at the beach, tourism, okay? So she explained to me that basically they would go to shows, trade shows in the fall, and they would look in and select all their products for the entire next year, next season. And then late in the fall, uh, into December, they would work up their order for all their inventory for one full season. That could be tens of thousands of pieces, okay, a lot of money too. And then they would start placing the orders, and, and they're used to dealing with some of these large manufacturers that specialize in this, and you have to buy in, in very great volume. But what they would do is, because some of these smaller shops had a hard time holding all the inventory there in one place, so uh, in many cases they were they were placing one order, paying for it in advance, and then it was delivered in three separate shipments. Uh, one was prior to Easter weekend, which is usually the first big beach weekend. Uh, the next was prior to Memorial Day weekend, obviously a big weekend. And then the third shipment came in in June prior to 4th of July, which is usually the biggest weekend at the beach. Um, after that, they don't need any more because they're trying to get rid of all their inventory. So she was talking about how this was done and that, and I'm like, man, that's a lot of money you know, to buy that much up front. She said, it is. She said, we get a one-year bank loan, and it's good for one year. And we get that, and we buy all the merchandise, and then, you know, we start paying it back over the next 12 months. And <laughs> so I'm like, wow. So I knew I couldn't compete with the quantity she was buying, okay? I mean, you know, just couldn't do it. Uh, and I knew that I wouldn't be able to deliver that price either because she's buying such large quantity. But I also realized that the, a weakness in what they did was the fact that they had to buy so much un, uh, sight unseen. And sight unseen is, is not right term because they know what's going to go on it. But it, it doesn't really count until it's in front of the customer. So it's sight unseen until it gets in front of the customer. And then the customer either likes what they see or they don't. Okay. And then I asked her, I said, listen, the stuff that sells good, how long does it take to get more? And she said, well, you can't. You order for the whole year. They don't do reorders. She said, when our season's kicking off, they're working on snow skiing production. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh. So I so said, let me get this right. You're ordering in advance. You don't know what's going to sell. The sell, stuff that sells good, you run out of. Then you're stuck with stuff that doesn't sell well, and you're either going to have to give it away or really discount it or whatever. She said, yeah, that's kind of how it works. And I said, wouldn't it be nice if you could just test market some things, you know, uh, and, and see how that works? And, and that came real fast as a light bulb, okay? Um, and I said, you know, in my case, for example, maybe you want to buy 48 mugs and stored at 4,800, okay? And you can put them out there on the shelf and you can see mix and match designs. 
see which designs sell the best, and then we can get you more within a week. And every time you need more, we'll get you more. And, you know, and so I'm going, I'm starting to think of a name for my program that I just invented, you know. Uh, and so all I could think of was an industry term called just-in-time delivering, you know. So um, I told her it was my just-in-time uh, delivery program where she could test market anything. And then I gave her some prices, and, of course, her eyes got real big, and she says, that's a lot of money. And I'm like, well, it is because you're only buying a small quantity. I said, but once you figure out what works, we can sell in bigger quantity and get the price down. So some of these shops, that actually worked very well. And others, it didn't. Okay, I mean, everybody's different how they do business. But it was an approach, and it helped that I understood what one of their weaknesses was in their business model and what some of their challenges were. And, oh, by the way, different things do cross boundaries. We started out saying the Hard Rock was advertising, which it was, but it's also a souvenir product. And that's why they put all these graphics on there. And they're targeting tourism because that gets people in the door to buy products and also to buy souvenirs and take them home. All right, next on my list of what is this under the what are you selling concept. Uh, this is kids artwork, obviously. But the key word is fundraiser. Uh, it's a great program too, by the way. You have the kids draw and then you um, sublimate it onto something. So... There's a lot of cool ways you can do this, and, and, and in fact, I know that Coastal has the markers, okay? They actually have the sublimation markers where the kids actually can use the sublimation markers to create the image. Now, if you didn't have the markers, what would happen is they would draw an image on paper, then you have to scan it or take a photograph, uh, set it up into an image that you can actually sublimate onto something. But, but it's a great, great product line because you bill it as a fundraiser. You don't bill it as kids' artwork on something because now you go to, you know, the PTA uh, or maybe it's for preschool or, you know, there's any number of different groups that can use this concept. So the kids are basically going to draw on it. You're going to supplement it on stuff, and mom and dad are going to buy that stuff, okay? But you don't say it that way. You say, i got a great fundraiser I want to show you. And see, that's an important way to sell because you're coming across as a professional. You have a program, and you have something that's going to benefit them. What? Fundraising. Okay, fundraising. Here we have a deer on a shirt. <laughs> what is this? It's called making a statement. Uh, that's important. A lot of people want to make a statement by what they do and what they wear. So you can help them do that. Um, I'm, I'm not big into hunting, but I do a lot with fishing. And so, you know, I've been into fishing clubs and actually go there with a table and set up products and show it to the members to sell. You know, I asked if I could come do it, and they let me do it. Uh, sometimes I've gone to clubs, and I've turned around and, and made it a fundraiser. I let the clubs sell certain products, you know, or they can do custom. You know, if you go to a hunting club, and the guy's got a picture of a deer they killed lying in the back of his pickup truck, and he's holding up the head so you can count the points on the antlers, um, he likes to put that on stuff, okay? And you can make that happen. Now, this right here, I'm going to tell you, the artwork doesn't really impress me. I didn't do it. Uh, I don't like the lettering. I just I just feel like the lettering is just doesn't do it justice. Um, but really and truly, if I'm going to go into a club, I'm going to go in with the concept of maybe doing some personalized custom stuff. Okay, as I mentioned, you know, with pictures. But also, I want to try and sell directly to the hunting club themselves. So if you go in with more of a pre-made logo, something like this, which um, you know they could put onto you know shirts and jackets and you know sweats, that kind of stuff. That's pretty cool. Okay, uh, kind of gets their attention. You know, and it's sort of selling a lifestyle thing. You know, I, one group I found that really likes to make statements is the U.S. Marines. Yeah, so I've done some stuff on the Marine Corps. Uh, very interesting, some of that stuff. So, but but it's a psychological thing, and that's what I'm talking about. When you're when you're doing sales and marketing, there's so much psychology involved in tapping in because if you can tap in, make an emotional connection, you can make a sale. Okay, and so that's kind of what's happening here. It's people, oh, that looks cool. Okay, now they're excited and want to buy it, right? I mean, that's what you're trying to do. If you let them, if you leave it to their imagination too much, a lot of people don't have a good imagination. They never go anywhere. All right. My next item is, well, I was already there, personalized gifts. You know, and that's a huge marketplace. I mean, because with sublimation, we can personalize with a picture. All right. If you start looking at through all these images here, um, here's our dog, the, not my dog, I mean the dog okay, for the picture, right? Uh, the dog's name is Kiwi, okay, there it goes on the wall. This is a silhouette of the dog. 
uh, this is her dog, by the way, uh, not related to me. I do know her, though. And anyway, um, she has a, a cover for her um, iPad, and there's a picture of the dog. Uh, she has a sublimated quilt, and there's a dog photo to bombing, see, photo bombing, uh, right here um, in their picture. There he is prominently on the wall. He's on all these little things here. He's got his own little doggy bandana that's been sublimated. Uh, he has a pillow that's been sublimated. She has socks that have been sublimated. And there's also um, a little throw rug on the floor that's been sublimated. So there's a lot of personalization going on. And that's something we can really, really do well with sublimation. But, but you always need to position it as unique made tailored just for you, personalized, you know, use keywords like that because it helps us keep the value of the products higher when we're using those keywords. So think about the keywords and stick with them, okay? Next, we have Hannah Elizabeth, and this can be identified with a keyword of a memory, okay? This is memories. You know, think about things. I mean, just think about how you say things, you know? Do you say, oh, we could put a picture of the kid on a plaque? Mm. You know, or could we say we could capture a memory and preserve it forever? I mean, you know, that's what we're trying to do here. And when you do look at the picture, you have to ooh and ah, and it's so beautiful, and I got a great way to capture this, you know, important moment, because that's what we're doing here. That's what we do with photographs. We capture a moment, preserve it forever, okay? Think through those kind of things, because a lot of times it's what you say defines the value, how you present your product. So you got to stay on top of that. Yeah, another version of memories. You know, here is something that was sublimated basically onto a plaque hung in the wall of a nursery, and the, because it was written by the husband about the newborn little girl, they had the wife ended up paying one hundred and twenty-five dollars for it. How do you like that? Okay, emotional connection. And then finally, one of my most famous shots. <laughs> a lot of people have seen or heard me. I love pulling this one up. What is this? Well, it's the pet rock. And for those who don't remember. It was an awesome, awesome product that <laughs> people actually bought. But it's proof that people buy just about anything if it's packaged and promoted creatively. And when I say packaged and promoted, the packaging, I'm not talking about that box. When I'm talking about packaging, is how you describe something. That's how you package it, how you describe it, not what you put it in. Okay. All right, so it's all about the power of perception. And perceived value determines the price someone is willing to pay. I've already said that at least three times. Keep on saying it, all right? That's what it's all about. It's all about perception. If you can raise the perceived value by what you do, you can get a higher price. And you need to focus on that rather than lowering your price. Because a lot of times you first talk to someone, their perception isn't where your perception is. So you've got to work on raising the perception. Or you will be forced to lower the price if you want that person to buy from you. We don't want to go that direction. Okay? All right. Think of personalization in everything that you do. I don't care what they want. Can we add some kind of little personal twist? Um, photographs are a great way to do some type of personalization. You know, if we took this plaque here where she's a 2011 Teacher of the Year, um, anything could have gone where that image is. There could have been a mascot for the school. There could have been more text. But really the image says it all because we've captured her and we've captured some of her you know, key students. And so years and years and years from now, people can look back at that and remember that moment. So that photograph really added a lot of value. Did it add any cost? Nope. If we were going to put sublimation ink there, the cost is the same regardless of what we put there. Okay. So and then keep that in mind. Um, good sublimation has the same price as bad sublimation. So let's focus on good sublimation. Okay. Uh, stuff that's exciting, that looks good, it's high quality, all that kind of thing. You know, put it to use. Um, always be thinking about turning ordinary into extraordinary. This is a sellable product. We can certainly sell this to the family. You know, they'd be thrilled, you know, with really nice photo, you know, prints on items they can put around the house. Or we can go to the Hannah Elizabeth route, which I was just showing you a minute ago, where we've taken what I call the digital birth certificate. So we've taken a picture of the baby now, put her name on there, more personalization, some nice cute graphics, birth date, birth weight, parents, all that stuff is all on there together. This is going to bring in a higher price point than that, okay? All these different memories of life, you know, by adding more graphics to it and putting it on a product where we can display it, those will be displayed forever. Those aren't things that get displayed for like six months and put away. They get displayed forever, 
okay? And many times the child, when, you know, goes off and has her own family, she wants to take some of those products with her, you know, for her children to see. You know, here we have the football player, which we could sell. We have a football player on a flat plaque. Uh, total cost somewhere around, um, I think it's around seven bucks-ish, okay? Depending on which size plaque you use, right? Here we take a different substrate, put some graphics to it, same image, and now we got about a nine dollar you know investment. But you're going to be selling this for in the thirties, and you can be selling this for in the upper teens, lower twenties. So it only costs you two bucks more, but you've got a lot more margin out of it because you made it more interesting. You made it more extraordinary. Okay. You now here's another example where we have just a plain image, and we can sell that, and make money just with a nice little easel plaque there. But when I go and use the sports plaque that's got the little rounded corner where I can actually sublimate in different types of, you know, balls, volleyball, soccer ball, baseball, whatever, and I put in the lightning bolts and all this stuff, this is just more interesting than that. And they both have about the same cost to produce, but that one's going to get a higher price point because it's just more interesting to look at. If we take, I'm really kind of hooked on awards here, but if we take and compare engraving to a photo plaque, I mean, the photo plaque, again, it captures the moment, preserves it forever, has a really nice message, full color. This costs a lot less money to make than that, and we can sell it for more. Okay, we can produce it faster and cheaper and sell it for more than that. That's pretty important. I'll guarantee you Eddie Lewis will keep this till the day he dies. Okay. Here popular sport where I live, surfing, especially when there's a hurricane brewing, you know, before the hurricane, they all like to go surf, but you know what, you go out there and you start taking pictures of surfers in the bigger waves, merge it with some graphics, put it on a t-shirt, and you can sell it directly to them for about 29 bucks, okay, um, it just works, and here's the other little thing I know about surfers, is in the summer, they're the only ones I know who tend to, you know, wear long sleeve t-shirts, and they're not just wearing any shirt, they typically wear poly performance shirts, because they are more comfortable in the water, and they're wearing them because they're paddling on the surfboard in salt water, which will give them a rash. They don't call them t-shirts, they call them rash guards, okay? Perfect for sublimation. Then we can put in some, you know, text down here at the bottom, whatever we want to do. Hurricane such and such, watch out. But even with, even with promotional products and advertising, photographs can make a huge difference, and sublimation does it so well. Here we see a mouse pad, rather boring, okay, until we put something onto it. But once we put something onto it, we're going to get that masterpiece look, okay. Uh, here we have now provided an image that tells a story, okay. Um, so many times with promotional products, people just put their logo and nothing else because they're trying to brand themselves. But it's hard to be branded if people don't know what you do. So here we have the cheeseburger that really tells you all you need to know about what Sally Ann's does. They make cheeseburgers, okay? But that's not the end of it. If you stared at that all day long and you like cheeseburgers, you're probably going to get hungry, okay? So how do we satisfy the hunger? Well, we have the express menu here on the mouse pad. We tell you where you can call or where you can go online to actually place the order. And we got the pricing as well. So what we have is a call to action. We want to stimulate you into being hungry, and the call to action is to call Sally Ann's. So this becomes a really cool promotional type of product. And think about that when you're working with your clients. You add that photo in. The photo didn't cost you any money. Ink is ink, man. You just, you know, what you created there with that ink actually increases the value of the product. Okay? Always think about dull versus exciting because it's very easy to be dull. Now, yeah, this has got lettering and everything added to it, but imagine if we just took that lettering and moved it over there. That's rather boring still, okay? Here we have the nuclear baseball. Here we have the baseball. Uh, so, again, think about, hey, can I go out and get a stock design that's a little bit more interesting than that, okay, before I put the text on it? You know, here we have a football, and then we have the killer football. You know, the same thing. Can we, can we spruce up what we're doing a little bit, make it a little more exciting, a little more eye-catching, okay? Because that raises that perceived value. Uh, you know, here we have the soccer ball, and then we got the flaming soccer ball. And again, we've added some text here and everything, but but you have the, the scary-looking kid, and you have the flaming soccer ball. Just adding the flames to the soccer ball takes that to a whole new level, okay? So you always want to be thinking about that, because a lot of times the customers are boring, and they're saying, we want to put a picture of a soccer ball with some lettering. Okay, 
do more than that, please, okay? Because if they walk away and they get excited by what you've created for them, then they're going to smile when they walk out the door. First of all, they may just buy more already because they like the mock-up you create for them. And then second, when other people see it, other people probably want to buy it as well. So keep that in mind. Little things you can do on every job. Okay, if you take, for example, a license plate here and we use this Mavericks logo, um, it's, there's, to me there's way too much white space. Okay, um, I can take and put a background in there easily and here I'm putting a background and yes, it's a plastic license plate, but it looks and feels like metal. Okay, it doesn't really feel like it, but it does look like it. Okay, it looks like if you were to touch it, you could feel all those ridges, which you cannot, but it looks like it. But you know what? It's only pennies worth of extra ink. But by putting in the solid background, we call this full bleed because it goes from edge to edge, you have enhanced the perceived value of the product and you can therefore get more money for it. Those are things you can do on every single product you do every day. Just putting in the full bleed backgrounds, giving it some extra twist and extra look uh, without going too much over the top. You know, you can really do some cool stuff. So at the end of the day, you don't have to be an artist. Just know where art is because everything I showed you is art that I did not create, okay? All the images that I've showed you like this, uh, they all came from Great Dane Graphics, okay, which you can buy from online. There's other sources as well. Um, but that's what I'm saying. If you know where these things are and you spend time on their sites, just getting familiar with the stock images that they sell and kind of storing them away in your head, that can be very helpful when you're talking to a client and start thinking, hey, we can really make this a lot more interesting. And keep in mind that when you buy a lot of this work online, uh, if you're buying unflattened artwork, which means it was created in layers, or you're buying vectors, that means a lot of times we can actually take out things like just the Florida separated away from here, you know, depending on who made it, what f formats in, and what your capabilities are. So lots of great artwork there to enhance the value of your products. Then we talk about the product package. Remember, it's how you package it. It's, it's not the box you put it in, okay? Uh, and this is where we start talking about sampling. Uh, don't have a sample area in your shop that looks like this or walk into a client with a collection that looks like that, okay? It looks thrown together because it is, okay? And that's not very professional or inspiring. You want samples that do a lot of the selling for you. You also want complimentary samples because you want it to look like they're supposed to buy more than one. You know, this isn't so wild over here on the right-hand side but it's still some unrelated items. These two items are related, the rest of them are not, okay? So it's, it doesn't really work. It's not a complementary set of products like I'm getting ready to show you. And we saw this one a few minutes ago, but this is a great example of complementary products. Everything here has some format of the Brighton uh, colors and the Brighton mascot, okay? Which is the Tigers right here. So it's a nice looking kit it may not be necessarily the most perfect collection of products in there, but, but the idea is that if you're going to go into, if you're talking to a high school, you're probably talking to like a booster organization and you're showing them a fundraising, okay, using fanware spirit products for fundraising. Here you're showing a good collection of products and they're all, again, interrelated, complementary. The idea is that you're probably going to get a larger order because they're going to get more pieces. And that's why I say these are keys to larger orders. Now, the next one here could look a little chaotic, but um, I did it that way kind of on purpose. This is one that I created, and in every single one of them, they do have the client logo. So this is actually for a corporate entity. I did some creative things, like I took the word hookers out of that whole little logo thing here and stuck it, just the lettering, for example, in this bag tag. Um, put images, pictures on as many things as we possibly could. By putting the picture here on the... Um, sign for the international headquarters, you're identifying exactly what these people are in the business of doing, where it says world record Atlantic sailfish. Wow, here it is. They make tackle. They caught that fish. You buy our tackle, you catch that fish. See, that's what they're saying. Uh, so all the different products do have the branding in them, though they're a totally different layout, okay, and, and how it's done. And some of the products might even can be sold, okay. You might actually be able to sell things like the phone covers. You can certainly, these make great promotional products to give away, like the bag tax. You know, it's got a photo in there. It's pretty cool stuff. So, again, having that product packaged together helps people have, you know, brainstorms themselves on all the things you can do. Now, here's what I call the rubber stamp packaging, which there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's really the exact same thing just about on every product. 
I like a little more versatility. It's my personal opinion, but as you saw the one before, it could have looked a little chaotic to you. It definitely wasn't the rubber stamp. But anytime, I think the, the one for the school is probably a really good example because you're seeing the same branding throughout, but it is a little different on each product. Um, the next one is, could be a bed and breakfast, a boutique hotel, you know, whatnot. And this is really eye-opening because a lot of people don't realize the full extent of products out there that can be sublimated. If you went into a bed and breakfast, you may look at it as like, okay, this place has got six rooms. How much am I going to sell? Well, if you get your hands on all the right things and think about what could go into six rooms, just for fun, what could go? Average rooms can have two people on a bed and breakfast. So we're going to have one serving tray, two coasters. Uh, we'd need two coffee mugs in the bathroom. We can put a soft soap dispenser, toothbrush holder. There are linens that we can sublimate. we got the door hanger that goes in the room. A lot of them have the old-fashioned keys on the keychain. There we go. We got that. Uh, we got the door number right here. Um, I mean, that's how many products right there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's at least ten products that could go in every single room. Plus, you'd have more than one set of linens, okay? So there's something to about, you know, front desk, welcome to the hotel, clock, you know, different rooms. Oh, we got a conference room here. Maybe we have um, the breakfast area over here. Oh, name badges for all the employees. Uh, there's even, you know, um, plates and things that can be sublimated. There's fine linens. There's table runners. There's a lot of stuff. And the whole idea is that when you walk in, they all, all they want is a coffee mug. <laughs> you walk in with a kit like this, and they're going to start looking at it and say, wow. Now, keep in mind, too, when you look at these things, Build your own kits. Don't build one for a particular client. Build your own kit that can be used for an entire market, okay? But if you made one for every single client, it costs you a fortune. You just want one that say, hey, I'm going to build one for bed and breakfast, and you're going to go to every bed and breakfast you can find over the next six months and keep showing your, you know, your kit. Okay, that's what it's for, all right? Um, here we have another, and in this particular one, uh, boaters that name their boats, put logos on them, if they'll spend the money to put a logo on a boat and name it, they're going to spend the money to buy a whole bunch of stuff with that same logo. So that might fit more into the personalization market, but I've done lots and lots and lots of stuff for boaters and made a, a fairly decent amount of money over the years with all the different custom stuff I've done for the boating marketplace. So I'm just here to tell you it's incredible everything that they'll put logos on. So you put ideas in front of them, get them excited, and they're, they just start buying that stuff, okay? Buying it. All right. So some of your keys to sales success that we've been talking about here, just kind of recapping. Turning ordinary into extraordinary, that's probably the top one of all, okay? But in doing that, you have other things at play. And part of it is don't focus on price. And, and I know it's always an issue, but don't focus on Here's why. Someone else will always do it for less. See, I emphasize that, less, less. Someone will always do it for less, 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 okay? It's so bad that if I did it for you for free, someone would probably pay you to take it, okay? It's just crazy, okay? No matter what you do it for, someone will do it for less, even at a loss, okay? That's what we're trying to go for. That's what my double less is. So a lesson in less, okay? Don't focus on price. Focus on being the best. I didn't say that right. Focus on being the best, okay? What does that mean? That means great graphics, unique products, creative packaging, the right equipment, and go where the money is, okay? You, once you, you, you're taking over and looking at the bed and breakfast marketplace or whatever, that's where the money is. Go there. If it's out of town, go there, okay? I mean, don't limit yourself to your neighborhood. I see people do that too often. That's why it's important to really choose a, a certain market, Start local and then just keep on branching out from there, man. If you need to travel, I've done that plenty of times. Um, go do it, okay? That's what's going to get you the sale. All right. Well, that uh, pretty much concludes what I had to say today. I uh, want to thank you for attending. And if you have questions of me, you can certainly add those, ask those at this time. You can email me direct. You can uh, contact Coastal because Coastal has great staff, a lot of knowledge there, great products, okay, great equipment like sawgrass equipment, uh, so they're a great partner for you. So, Matthew, you still with us? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Thanks, Jimmy. Really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, if there are any questions, feel free to send them through. And, you know, as always, too, a after an event like this, feel free to pick up the phone, call Coastal at any time. 
with any question that comes to mind. Uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of different background experiences that can, you know, help you find the answers you need. And that's what, you know, that's what they're all about. And that's what we're all about at Sawgrass too, is putting together programs for you, providing information to you. That's what we try to do. So for everyone or for anyone who joined our webinar a little bit later, I want to let everyone know that we will be co-hosting another webinar in September with Jimmy that's all about creating holiday decor that you can create to succeed in the holiday season. And we will be sending out details via email and also through our social media channels very soon. Okay, here's a question. Do you have any recommendations on saving money with printing? Um, that's going to be a long answer, so just be prepared. Uh, when you start looking at printing, okay, first of all, keep in mind that depending on whether you're using the SG400, SG800, uh, it, it's roughly a half a penny per square inch. So if I did an image that's 8 inches by 10 inches, that's 80 square inches, that's about 40 cents. Um, so the reality is there's not a whole lot you can do to get you know, that 40 cents you know, down from anything else. But there is a whole lot you can do when you start looking at printing as a whole because what you really want to do is look at your total production cost. And when I do the pricing um, seminars and webinars, and what I've learned a long time to do in-house, is if you figure out, first of all, what is your cost per hour in overhead. And let's just say for, for easy math that, um, that your overhead is $30 per hour. Okay, If it's $30 per hour, that's uh, 50 cents a minute. Okay, 50 cents a minute. So if you go to, to produce anything, okay, let's say you produce something and it takes you 10 minutes at 50 cents per minute, it costs you $5 to produce that. That's not including the cost of the substrate. That's saying it costs you $5 to do it. You might have only used 40 cents worth of ink, but it still costs you $5 to do it because the reality of your cost to print is taking your overhead and spreading it out against all the products that you're selling, they're bringing the revenue in. Okay, now it's an important lesson because if you're spending too much time producing one piece at a time, your cost can be astronomical, and you don't know it. Now, I, I realize in the beginning a lot of you don't have enough sales to maybe keep you busy enough. Okay, so that's a little different. But when you get into the point where you do have enough sales that you have a lot to do. The more pieces you can produce per hour against that overhead, the lower the cost per piece. Okay, so it's very simple. If, if your hourly overhead was thirty dollars per hour, fifty cents a minute, and you could produce um, ten pieces, they cost you five dollars each, right? Fifty cents a minute. Um, if you could produce a hundred, it costs you a whole lot less. So when you start looking about saving money with printing, what you're trying to do is reduce your downtime between jobs and within a job. You know, how fast can you prepare uh, one product to put in the heat press right behind another product? So while the heat press is closed with product number one, you want to make sure product number two, if it's already printed out, it's printing out so that you can take the substrate and have it ready to go with that product. So when you open up the heat press, you pull that product out. Hopefully you have it set up where you can just slide it aside Throw the next one in, close the heat press, typically a minute for most products. So you got a minute now to now get the paper off the other one, okay, and then kind of put it aside and get the next one prepared. So the faster that you can work without making mistakes, the cheaper per piece because you're getting more against your cost of your overhead per hour. Um, another thing I've seen where people sometimes get too carried away with, you know, when we look at our sublimation transfer paper, the idea is to maximize it, right? Put as many images on one sheet of paper as you can. Um, you know, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper starts around 20 cents, okay? Um, and if you only put like one name badge right in the middle of eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, you used a whole lot of paper to make that name badge, right? The idea is, hey, we could probably put 12 name badges in there, right? So we want to do that. However, make sure that the time you spend trying to figure out how to put how many things, you, you know, how many, oops, the time you spend trying to figure out how many name badges you can pull on that single sheet of paper doesn't become excessive. I watched somebody one time spend 15 minutes trying to figure out how to fill up a sheet of paper with images. And I'm like, you realize you spent 15 minutes to save 20 cents, right? I mean, you know, that doesn't work. So it, it's really time is money in what we're doing once we do have enough production to keep us busy. 
keep things flowing and the cost per piece goes down. Okay, and that's why when you sell volume orders, it goes down. Okay, if you're doing 12 of the same thing, one behind the other, you will get more out the door in one given hour than if you're doing 12 products of which each one is different. Okay, because you kind of got to retool between each one. So that's the thing I always teach people, having gotten into larger scale production, um, really, how many more pieces can I get per hour? That's what I'm always trying to do. And that's what brings down the price. I told you it was a long answer. Cost, brings down the cost. The idea is not to bring down the price, bring down the cost. Okay, well, I need to wrap there because I have to be somewhere else in just a few minutes. And though I like to be in two places at once, I don't always succeed. So, Matthew, I appreciate uh, joining up with you guys today and look forward to next month where we hit that holiday season. Absolutely. Thanks again, Jimmy. And thank you, everyone, again, for attending our webinar. And we hope to see you in the next one.